Thanks, Sean. Hi, everyone. I'm Zane Asgard, co-founder and CEO of Pixie. I'm also an adjunct professor of computer science at Stanford University, working in the areas of edge AI and systems. Today, I'm going to talk about what is Pixie. In a nutshell, Pixie is a developer tool that allows software engineers to debug, monitor, and analyze applications that run on Kubernetes without having to manually add instrumentation to their source code. So with that in mind, why are we building Pixie now, and where do we see things going? So you know, over the past few years, software has started to become more decoupled, moving into microservices, getting orchestrated by Kubernetes, and many production systems even run across multiple clouds. So teams have basically figured out how to you know, build, uh, build software in a scalable and agile way. On the other hand, as we take a look at how we secure, manage, and debug our applications, we you know, still spend a lot of time just collecting and wrangling the data that we need to, to debug the app applications. So where do we typically see this time getting wasted? So the first area is typically in this rigid, predetermined data collection, right? A lot of it comes in the form of like boilerplate code that you add, and usually language-specific code that you add to your application that allows you to understand what's happening. In this very simple example over here, there is actually an HTTP request, actually it's a gRPC request, where there is you know, Go-specific code that's added to capture information about the request, and you can actually see the business logic is starting to get buried within the source code. Um, one of the, I, I guess one of the little tidbits I wanted to share is, uh, you know, as an ex-Googler, one of the things we were actually pretty used to is just getting lots of instrumentation for free. And that allowed us to focus on instrumentation that was important, um, like, you know, getting like customer information and actually even running tests around it. Uh, one of the disadvantages of adding manual instrumentation is that it can land up being brittle and break when you're actually trying to debug a production outage. So, you know, uh, to summarize, it's actually quite painful to, to manage and maintain all this boilerplate. And we'll take a look in a little bit about how Pixie makes this easier. The other area, and, you know, some of this is based on work that I do at Stanford, along with, you know, tons of research coming out of uh, Google and Facebook, is that most of the telemetry data, which is typically metrics, traces, and logs, um, it, it is useless, right? Like 98% of the data is being trucked around to the cloud when most of it is just giving you information that says, you know, your application is going okay or and nothing's really wrong. Um, but 2% of the data is extremely important to, you know, actually understand why your application is broken and be able to debug it. So one of the things that, you know, we're interested in Pixie is actually moving enough of the capture and compute all the way to the node so that we can determine what this 2% of the data is, which allows us to efficiently transmit that information uh, over to the cloud or use it for, for deeper analysis. The third area, you know, is that we have UIs that are pretty, pretty rigid and, you know, sometimes very difficult to use. Um, as software developers, you know, we like the fact that we can quickly go and get information about metrics and logs and hopefully give us enough information to, to debug what's going on. But part of what's missing is the ability to easily extend these, especially extend them in a way where we can codify the knowledge that exists in, you know, in, in the team. And we'll take a look at how Pixie addresses some of these things. So why are we building Pixie now and what are we planning to do? So part of Pixie's promise is to extend the observability stack to the edge, which helps us actually reduce both the complexity and the cost of the system. And with that in mind, we have kind of three pillars that we think about for Pixie. The first one is you know, the rigid predetermined manual collection. We want to change that so that we can actually have code-driven collection that can actually happen on the fly even after the application has been deployed. This actually you know, removes this like, crucial uh, redeploy stuff that's typically required to add additional instrumentation. When you have a production outage, you can get information about your application without having to modify it. And we'll talk about that. Uh, in a few minutes. The other area, like we discussed, is currently most systems are cloud only. They do all their storage and do all their machine learning in the cloud. Um, you know, part of what we want to do is actually move some of the storage and the machine learning to the actual cluster and even the actual node so that we can actually reduce the amount of data transfer, making the entire system a lot more efficient and also allow us to collect a lot more data without increasing the burden on your system. The third area is move away from these very manual style interfaces to something you know, which provides out-of-the-box functionality, 
But you know, as developers, it gives us things that we want, which is basically it gives us a good API and allows us to extend the extend the user interfaces by writing scripts. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about what is Pixie. So as we mentioned earlier, Pixie is you know, a platform that allows you to do instant code-driven debugging. And we provide information about application performance metrics, infrastructure metrics, network performance, and debug logs. Um, and we actually have like three different modalities you can interact through, which is our CLI, our UI, and also our UI that can run on mobile devices. They all utilize the same API and underlying code, so they're all very consistent and, and work out of the box. Uh, just a lot of different things for a small company like us to focus on. So what we typically do is uh, primarily target application developers who are interested in looking at performance issues in production. And the way we think about this problem is this notion of a T. So the top of the T, as we like to refer to it, is give everyone no instrumentation baseline visibility, which means that once Pixie is up and running in your system, we will actually give you information about all the HTTP requests and infrastructure metrics, and a bunch of other things without having to do any work at all. Um, further, on some language stacks like Go and C++ and Rust, we can actually give information about code level context. Uh, Pixie does this by actually leveraging new technologies like eBPF to help us actually capture information and we correlate it together with information that's available in your Kubernetes cluster to actually make this information digestible. Ultimately, as I mentioned, every single thing in Pixie is a script. So we have you know, at the bottom, you can see that we send over Pixie scripts to our API, and we can return back metrics, traces, logs, events, and even insights about the traffic that you're seeing. One of the nice things about this abstraction layer is that we've been able to build a developer community that has managed to build out many different um, other use cases um, through the bottom of the T. So some of those use cases are things like network performance and application security, uh, which are enabled by Pixie, but we're not uh, currently uh, focused on as a product. With that in mind, how do you actually install Pixie and what are, what are the implications? So the easiest thing to do, right, is to just grab or install, install that sh file and, and execute it. And we will download the CLI, help you authenticate, and get everything going with a single command. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more insight into what's happening, you can actually use one of our other deployment schemes like Docker, Debian, or, or even like YAML, YAML and Helm charts. Uh, so that you can actually deploy directly to your cluster without using our CLI. With that in mind, uh, I'll go through a quick overview of how Pixie is deployed using our CLI. Uh, since I don't really want to subject everyone here to, to watching the Kubernetes cluster deploy all our services and pods, uh, I'll actually just show a quick video of how this works. So to get Pixie deployed, you type in PX deploy. We discover clusters, run some checks, and then basically let you install Pixie. Um, you can see on the bottom, we have a timer that quickly shows how, how uh, fast everything is running. And once Pixie is installed, which typically takes about two and a half minutes on, on my cluster, you can actually list all the scripts and you can instantly start seeing data. So just to recap in our install process, which takes about two and a half to three minutes, you can instantly get access to data without having to modify um, the cluster state or the application other than installing installing Pixie. Cool. With that in mind, I will switch over to the UI where this is the same demo cluster that actually was demoed in the video uh, where we actually have Pixie running. Since Pixie instantly actually gets access to all the traffic, we are able to generate all these service graphs for you like right out of the box. So this is like a high level cluster view. As you can see over here, I've selected my demo cluster and I'm running the script called PX cluster. We'll see what that means in a little bit. But you know, at a, at, in a nutshell here, we're seeing all the service graphs, which tell us like, here's all the services and what are the communication patterns between these services. In this demo today, I'm primarily gonna use this application called Online Boutique, which is a shopping application developed by Google to showcase Kubernetes. So inside of Online Boutique over here, I can see there's this thing called Checkout Service. We'll be coming back to that in some more details later. Um, but if you take a look at the edges of the graph, we actually summarize all the high-level information, like requests per second, errors, and the latencies. Um, Pixie understands relationships between objects, so you can actually you know, double-click on these entities, and we'll be able to generate uh, entity-specific views, like here's a request per second, or latency, or CPU usage. 
each of these views uh, in Pixie has a default for every type of Kubernetes entity. So quickly, I'm gonna switch over to the namespaces view over here, which summarizes all the namespaces on this cluster. And as part of that, I'm gonna go into Online Boutique, which is the application we're just gonna looking at. Uh, once again, you can see the service graph for Online Boutique as it's been summarized um, for this particular namespace. So, oh, one of the things we see over here right away is this plot, which actually shows you the latency distributions. With this, you can quickly see what the P50, P90, and P99 latencies are. And one of the things actually that's pretty apparent over here is, is this thing sticking out, and it says, oh, the P99 latency is 1.9 seconds. So if you actually dig into this, we can try to get a sense of where the latency issues are arising. And we can see that there's a huge latency spike you know, a couple minutes ago. And if you scroll down, we can actually see that the inbound traffic is actually quite slow, uh, and the outbound traffic is fine. We haven't summarized this in, in a waterfall chart, but you know, it's pretty apparent over here that there's some problem with the service. And interestingly, you know, if you scroll down, we have actually been able to figure out what the slow requests are. So over here, we're like, oh, this request actually took 2.9 seconds, and we captured an example of the slow request. So if you click over here, you can actually see that we do full body tracing of HTTP requests. And in this particular case, this is actually a, an HTTP2 request, because um, you know, this is a gRPC endpoint on Hipster Shop. So um, we can go over here, and we can see that there's this protobuf message that actually captures uh, you know, all, basically the entire request body of the HTTP, along with the source and destination, and what was the response for, for that gRPC call. Um, furthermore, Pixie actually captures contextual information about every single request that's actually stored and easily accessible. Uh, Natalie will actually be talking a lot more about that in, in a later talk. So just to, just to go into one more level of detail, um, Pixie also understands many different database protocols. Uh, for example, if I switch over to MySQL view, I can actually take a look at every single MySQL request that's been happening in the cluster. Um, and as promised earlier, everything inside of Pixie is done with scripts. So if I hit Command E, I can open up the editor and see what the script does. And in this particular case, uh, we can actually see Pixel, which is a Python DSL based on Pandas that Natalie will be uh, talking about a little bit later. And um, it's a pretty simple call that says, you know, fetch all the MySQL events that have been happening in the last 30 seconds, pick the top 100, and display them in the UI. So one of the nice things about this is using this um, scripting language, uh, developers and the community can actually build customized views that go beyond uh, simple, uh, simple charts. So far, we've seen how Pixie provides high-level visibility for every single application that runs in your system without actually going into the code. Uh, but as promised, as one more thing, we're gonna provide information about how Pixie can give you code-level visibility. So Pixie, uh, as one of its core focuses, can give you on-the-fly code-level visibility for Go with support for C++ and Rust coming soon. And you know, as I mentioned earlier, we already saw the no instrumentation baseline visibility, and now we're gonna dive into what code level context and, and visibility uh, means. So, you know, as a software developer, I'm sure everyone has run into production bugs that they wanted to solve, and they're basically thinking about, well, what if I could just add a print statement somewhere in my source code to see what's going on? And actually, we're here as one of the examples, we have a very simple function written in Go, and you're like, I really just wanna look at these variables, and I wanna stick a print statement. What you typically have to do is go in and add a log statement, wait for you know, the code to compile, run all the tests, go through code reviews, and then eventually get deployed in production, which you know, in some places might be a few hours and others could be a few weeks before you actually see the log statement in production. You know, we asked ourselves a question, what if we could actually add this log without having to go through this entire cycle? And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So with Pixie, we can actually go add these log statements um, in your source code, and we do this primarily by using stuff inside of eBPF, uh, which we'll have many, many talks about um, coming in the future. But if you're interested in some high-level stuff, you can feel free to check out my blog post. So with that in mind, we're gonna use uh, this application that we used for last um, uh, 
a last session called Online Boutique. And Online Boutique, as I mentioned, is a shopping application built by Google Cloud uh, that showcases microservices running on Kubernetes. So in this application, you can you know, go, go do things like buy a vintage camera lens and add it to cart, and then it will tell you how much it costs in terms of US dollars, place an order, and buy it. One of the things that happens inside of this application is that there's this thing called a checkout service, and it um, has a function that basically adds two different currency values. And we're gonna actually go figure out if we can capture the arguments to that function without having to read, uh, recompile and redeploy the code. So with that in mind, let's go into Online Boutique, jump into the checkout service, and then go to the pod for the checkout service. There's only one running, so we'll select that pod. And one of the things we need to grab is this thing we call the UPID, which is actually something called like a universal process identifier. And that actually gives us a unique ID that we can use to track any process within Pixie. So I'm gonna go to this little script we have called Boutique Checkout Trace that actually contains the code necessary to trace this money function inside of Online Boutique. So we're gonna take the UPID that we have and then copy it into here, um, which you know, actually runs this pxtrace.probe function. So let's talk a little bit about how this works. So we basically specify a path to a Go function we're interested in tracing. So in particular, we're providing a path to this function called money.sum. And just for a reference, you know, I don't really want to pull out the source code and get into all the details, but basically sum takes in two different currency values, uh, which are two protobufs, which have information about the value, like the fixed point values, and also the currency information. And it returns the sum money value, and if there's an error, uh, especially related to, to different currencies. <coughs> And with that, we basically define the probe function, which basically says, okay, for each one of these protobufs, dump out the units and the nanos, and then for the return values, also do the same thing. <coughs> so how does this actually work? Once this function is, is running, we call this thing called upstart trace point, which actually inserts this into, into the Pixie state. And Natalie will talk a little bit about how, how that works in the language, but at a high level, what we do right now is we take this code over here, we then generate all the BPF code necessary for us to actually go and observe this application while it's running uh, in a safe manner. And we find the right node and then deploy the BPF code in that node. Once the code is deployed, we take the values that BPF is generating and write it to Pixie tables, which you can then leverage the, the full power of the Pixie language downstream. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and just deploy this. And you can see over here that the trace point is now deploying. And once it's deployed, the schema will get prepared so we can query it. <coughs> uh, this usually takes a few seconds. And at that point, you know, if you're in this application and we actually go buy something, so let's say we have a vintage typewriter and you know, we go and buy these things and these two items are gonna cost us $87.12. We will place an order and you can see over here that we actually pulled out the request. And these are the two items that we purchased, the one $12 item and the other one is a $67 item. And uh, you know, just to see it again, I can pick another item. Let's say we buy a barista kit, add it to cart, place an order. Uh, we can see that we instantly capture the $128.72 item over here. Uh, we also capture other contextual information, like what time does this request happen in? And uh, along with all the other basic Pixie context information like the service and pod, we also capture language specific information in this case, for example, the GoRoutine ID that actually processed this request. So that's just a, a, you know, a little taste of what our uh, Go tracing and code level tracing stuff does. And you know, in the future, we don't really expect you to go find the exact function to trace, we would be able to provide you code level views for you to be able to click in and you know be able to tell us, okay, go add a log over here, tell us how long this function took to execute and give us you know, uh, information about the arguments. Um, further, we can actually do other dynamic tracing. Uh, for example, we can deploy uh, code from the very popular BPF trace project to actually dynamically capture other BPF information. Uh, a lot of this will be talked about in, in future community videos.
So with that, you know, it's a good jumping off point to what we think about other, um, other use cases. So one of the things is that while Pixie as a company is pretty heavily focused on building code level context that help application, de application developers debug their applications, the Pixie platform itself is pretty extensible. And this has allowed members in our community to build things to monitor you know, the CI build health or actually go deep into network monitoring, find out information about TCP retransmit events, or even build stuff that helps with application security. Um, and actually, Kelsey will be talking about some of these things in, in a little bit. So, you know, we talked a lot about how the community stuff works, but what are we working on next? So one of the things that we've been really excited by is, you know, building more and more Edge ML. And what we mean by this is actually <clears throat> giving information by analyzing all the traffic um, that's running through your node and summarizing it by using various machine learning techniques. So, you know, someone on our team actually put this fun thing together, which reminded us of Microsoft Clippy, so we stuck this on a slide. But part of the idea over here is that we can actually go and analyze information and tell you what we see as specific problem areas. So in this particular case, you know, we pointed out there's a high correlation with latencies on one of your services. Um, since we actually understand all the traffic, we can actually go in and tell you specific keys that are causing trouble in your JSON messages or specific customer IDs or specific customer groups. Um, and all of this is done without actually having to do any work uh, because all of our models are running all the time and we're trying to figure out, based on this information, which signals are the most important ones to surface. You probably won't be seeing a, pic, uh, a Clippy coming in Pixie anytime soon, but we'll probably surface this in the UI in, in various different ways. So, um, how does this all work? Under the hood, uh, you know, we deploy these things called PEMs, which actually run on every single node collecting data from the Linux kernel along with other sources. We actually run machine learning models inside of our PEM, which run on 100% of the data on our data streams. We generate high-level features that we can then share with other nodes. Uh, in particular, we share it with this component we call Vizier, which is actually the thing that orchestrates monitoring across the entire cluster. And Vizier itself can take this information and send down model updates to basically help the PEMs capture information, um, information that's necessary to make decisions about what messages are good um, versus bad. Cool. Well, to summarize, you know, today developers waste a lot of time uh, wrangling telemetry and dealing with data. And Pixie aims to make that easy. Uh, we do this by extending the observability stack to the edge and providing a programmable interface that's easy to use. Um, our core focus is delivering what we call this one-click APM experience, where you basically install Pixie and you're up and running for application performance monitoring. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, members of our community have actually extended the Pixie platform to other use cases like infra and network performance monitor monitoring and application security. And part of the reason Pixie can achieve all of this is that we do edge machine learning where we can take a look at 100% of the data to help you understand where the issues are without overwhelming any of the system. 